In chapter 3, we want to know a little more about matter. Remember, from the definition of chemistry, chemistry is the study of matter and the transformation of matter. So it would be a very good idea to know some more about matter. Also in chapter 3, we will get introduced to energy. How energy makes transformations in matter possible. Let us begin with what is matter. A very simple definition for matter is that matter is anything that has mass and occupies some amount of space, which is another way of saying that it has a certain volume. You can rephrase this definition and simply say that matter is anything that has density. Why? Because density is mass divided by volume. Now, if I want to explain matter to my grandmom, I would most likely simply tell her that matter is anything that can be observed with our eyes or even if it cannot be observed with our eyes but if it exists then it is a piece of matter so some pieces of matter are very easy to see the things around us the chair you're sitting on the computer you're watching this on your cell phone the water you drink, the food you eat, and so on. Others are very difficult to see directly with our naked eyes, like the oxygen we breathe in, the carbon dioxide we exhale. But we know that they exist. They are in existence, and if they are in existence, then they are pieces of matter. The fundamental building block of matter is the atom. We will learn more about atoms in chapter 4. But for now, let us just simply say that atoms are sub microscopic particles. Now, why do we have the prefix sub here because we cannot even directly observe atoms under the microscope they are sub microscopic and they are the basic building block of all matter when atoms are connected together they form molecules so, what are molecules? Molecules are two or more atoms joined together in a specific geometric arrangement. We will learn about the specific arrangement for different molecules later in the semester. There are three common states of matter. In the solid state, the particles that make up the solid are closely packed and they are essentially not moving. If I have to draw a simple cartoon of the solid state, it will look something like this. The particles are tightly packed, leaving almost no room for movement. The liquid state of matter also have closely packed particles, but not as closely packed as we have in the solid state. And again, if I have to draw 
a cartoon of the liquid state the liquid state would look something like this they are close just not the particles are not as close as we have in the solid state so the liquid particles are free to move which is why a liquid would flow however a solid cannot flow it will simply remain fixed in one position the gas state of matter has the particles with great distances among the particles so if i have to draw a cartoon of the gas state it will look something like this the particles are very far apart they are essentially behaving as if they do not want to interact we will learn about gases later in the semester this is a very simple summary of the three states of matter in the solid state as we already know the particles of a solid are very close together and they are almost fixed in position they can vibrate but they only have very little room to vibrate solids have defined shape which means what they look like today is most likely what they would look like tomorrow if you do not disturb them in any way they also have defined volume which is another way of saying that they occupy a certain amount of space they are not going to change how much space they occupy tomorrow they are not going to spread around solids are incompressible if it's a real solid for example a lump of gold you cannot compress a lump of gold because the particles are just too close there is nothing more for you to compress in the liquid state as we already know the particles are freer to move around so they are close just not as close as in the solid state however a liquid has no defined shape which is another way of saying that a liquid would only take up the shape of its container if you put it in a spherical container it will look like a sphere if you put a liquid in a cylindrical container it will look like a cylinder it will take the shape of its container however liquids also have definite volume the amount of space a liquid occupies should not change if the liquid is not evaporating liquids are also almost completely incompressible it is not easy to push them closer because they are really close already in the gas state we already know that the gas particles are freer to move around because they spread around however gases have no defined shape they will completely fill up any container you put them in they will take up all the available space if you release a gas in the front of a room before you know it it will spread throughout the entire room so the shape of a gas is the shape of its container also gases have no defined volume they don't have any specific amount of space they occupy they are very greedy for space 
they would spread all over any available space. So the volume of a gas is always equal to the volume of its container. However, because of the great distance among gas particles, gases can be compressed. So you can push them closer to one another. And if you do that, you can turn them into a liquid or into a solid. 